consistent performance. They're looking to handle the pressure well and build confidence. And there's uh, former All Black, Kieran Crowley, a coach of the uh, Canadian side that, are, of course, making their debut um, at this tournament. They weren't part of the tournament last year. They were with the American Rugby Championships. But we welcome Canada to the tournament uh, this year. And, of course, they as well will be looking ahead to the uh, Rugby World Cup. And this is also a build-up for them before they take on U.S., in uh, July later on this year. So a great uh, side that uh, packed with experience. A lot of the players have played for Canada as well. Um, so it's going to be an interesting lineup in the uh, first match of the uh, World Rugby Pacific Challenge. Japan, Junior Japan taking on uh, Canada A. It's nice to see that the uh, conditions, weather conditions uh, are quite good uh, this morning, uh, Mr. Movilitu. Yeah, the crown is uh, okay, you know. Uh, it's, uh great day for, for rugby, but a uh, few of the teams going to be um, feeling by the, um, the weather. No? It's quite hot and humid, but they'll be used to it. And of course, uh, Fiji is uh, under threat from a cyclone uh, PAM that is developing in the region. It's expected to uh, be hitting Vanuatu or Fiji later on in the week, but fingers crossed it won't uh, spoil uh, Fiji hosting this tournament for, for 2015. As we just see the Canadian side Going through their moves there. And um, interesting as well to see that Canada making their de debut at this uh, tournament, uh, Ali Pareti. Yes, yeah, very interesting because uh, the Canadian team has been coached by the Karen Crowley, the, uh, the national head coach for Canada. No? Uh, he's here, you know, have a look at a few players because uh, this is a World Cup year. So I think he might uh, have, uh, you know, probably might pick a few players that will represent Canada in the World Cup. And also there, Japan going through their moves here in the Suva heat. And it'll be interesting as well to see how well the two teams handle the uh, hot and humid conditions here in Fiji. Yes, Japan, uh, last year they've sent in the uh, under-20s, uh, so we competed in the uh, PRC, the Pacific uh, Rugby uh, Cup. But they, um, they not really uh, did uh, quite well, but the World Cup, the Junior World Cup last year, they, they were very uh, constructive and they won the uh, trophy. So they qualify up to the tier one. So uh, from just sending that team to the PRC is a good deal for them. And nice to see uh, some of the locals that have uh, come to watch uh, Pacific, uh, the World Rugby Pacific uh, Challenge. And uh, we're just standing by for kickoff of the uh, first match. But uh, we'll just go for a commercial break. And when we come back, we'll bring you more. And welcome back to the ANZ Stadium here in the capital city of uh, Fiji, Suva, that is, of course, playing host to the World Rugby Pacific Challenge. And, of course, we welcome the uh, five teams that are here. Argentina Pampas from Pool A, Samoa A, Junior Japan, and in Pool B, the hosts, uh, Fiji Warriors, Tonga A, and, of course, uh, Canada A. Wonderful conditions here in the capital city, although we're under threat with uh, a looming cyclone, Pam. But fingers crossed that won't affect the rest of the tournament. I'm also joined in commentary uh, this morning by uh, a former flying Fijian and also uh, FRU development uh, officer, Mr. Ali Ferretti Modilutu. Welcome to our coverage uh, this uh, afternoon, Mr. Modilutu. Just your thoughts on the uh, match uh, this afternoon, the first one that will kick off the tournament, of course, uh, Canada and uh, Junior Japan. Yeah, I'm looking at the weather today, the weather is quite good. Uh, now I feel threatened from the, uh, the cyclone that has uh, been hitting Fiji uh, in a couple of days, but uh, that won't stop of uh, teams who want to play rugby today. Uh, but looking at the team, uh, looking at Canada, they've got a very uh, big pack. You know, uh, they have some very experienced guys with them. Some of the guys have been playing sevens and uh, they represent the Canada in the uh, Pacific uh, Rim last year. But uh, we're looking at Japan. Uh, Quite young team, you no, know, it's a uh, development side. It's a lot of uh, university uh, players in their team. But uh, after the final result today, then we'll see who are the best team out there. Ali I understand you also spent a stint uh, in Japan playing club rugby there. You know, just your thoughts on the standard of uh, rugby, particularly in Japan. Yeah, the standard of rugby in Japan now is uh, it's a lot of, uh, you no, know, it's move on and you no, know, there's a lot of uh, foreign players playing, especially in New Zealand and Australia. Now they take uh, Japan rugby to another level. You know? 
not like our friends that uh, know we have to uh, really uh, dig deep and walk out and try to lift the uh, standard of rugby. But Japan now has been rated as a uh, very constructive uh, team. You know? They play with pattern and uh, play with, uh, with the flair and uh, as you can see that the, a lot of uh, pace up here. And of course, uh, with um, Eddie Jones, the uh, head coach of the Japan side, that must have, you know, he must have brought a lot of experience and was uh, knowledge uh, to the game there in Japan. Yes, by looking at his uh, record, no, he's had a very good record. Now, uh, Japan, uh, by the way, they've been performing last year. You know, they're very, very uh, impressed with uh, how they perform on the field. You no, know? they keep improving every year. And of course, the two teams have uh, come out here onto the ANZ Stadium, uh, led by Hubert uh, Burn Burdens uh, for Canada. And of course, the Japanese side, uh, led by um, Kosuke Horikoshi. And it's going to be an interesting uh, first match here in the World Rugby Pacific uh, Challenge. And great weather conditions here in uh, Suba City as we prepare for the kickoff of the tournament. And, uh, of course, Canada are making their debut here in the tournament. They weren't uh, part of the tournament last year, having participated in the American uh, Rugby Championships. But it's nice to see them included in the uh, World Rugby Pacific Challenge Where this you're ready? year. Kieran Hearn with a nice kick up high gets this uh, first match underway in the World Rugby Pacific Challenge and wherever you're joining us from here in Fiji and right around the world we welcome you to our broadcast. As we can see the Canadian team coming in off the side now, you try to clear the ball, no? And temper's already flying in the uh, Suva heat. Yes, <laughs> it's already. A chance for Japan to get out of danger zone. <laughs> nice, a nice uh, touch finder there from uh, Ruji Noguchi. Kosuke Horikoshi will throw into this lineup for Japan. Throws it way back to the back and it looks good. Japan swing it out quickly. They have position at the moment. Away five white. Working well there, Ruji Yonimura at halfback. Bit sloppy at the moment. But they still have it with them. Kosuke Yurabe. Takes it in. Good. A good defense by the uh, Canadian. No, they, they force the Japanese out of the, the advantage line with good tackles coming in. No? They create 10 overs. So opportunity for first points here for the team that's making their debut, Canada A, and of course coached by former All Black uh, Kieran Crowley, who is also head coach of the Canadian side. And this will be a chance for players in this side to uh, impress the head coach with uh, the World Cup in mind later on this year in England. This is uh, no, this is a first outing for the, the players. The second will be uh, PNC, the Pacific Nation Cup. No, this is. Uh, World Cup uh, Rugby Challenge is just meant for all the local players, but no, it's good. Canada is, uh, is going to give us some uh, good competitions out there as well. Gordon McCrory. This for the first three points in the match. Drives it straight through the middle. And Canada A are first on the points board with uh, leading 5-0, thanks to uh, Gordon McCrory. Canada's on the point. So Japanese, what are they going to do this afternoon? They're going to play with pace. You know, try to get out from those uh, Canadian big forward pack and try to move the ball up wide. So they play for wide. Ruji Noguchi kicks it deep. 
taken in well there by the uh, Canadians. Seb Pearson took that one in. McCrory with the kick up high. Well read there at the back for the Japanese. As they clear it out once again, an attacking opportunity here. Ruji Onimura. That's Yuki Okada. Yonemura, great defensive effort there from Japan, but uh, from uh, Canada rather, but Japan still with the ball. Oh, it's been stolen. Yeah. Good defense again by the Canada. No, they're forcing uh, Japan into errors, so making big tackles to rush up the defense they said, line. No. They said I'm not allowed to roam on that. Trying to uh, cut Japan's, uh, trying to get over the advantage line. And a very experienced uh, forward pack as well with uh, Canada. A lot of them yes, have played of, for uh, the national side. A lot of experienced players out there. Some of these uh, forward, I've seen them playing for the Canadian national team as well. Nice long throw in there again, handled nicely by the Canadians. Uh, Gordon McCrory clears it out quickly. McCrory again at the back there. Great recycling from them. Liam Underwood. Here we see the back line. That's Moonlight. Still going. Very strong standing in that tackle. As they clear it once again very quickly. Kieran Hearn. Out wide, all he needs to do is handle it, and yes, they're going to cross over for the first try in this match. A very good try by the uh, Canadian. They won the ball from the line out. They received the ball across. Oh, moonlight uh, on the far side of the field, uh, hit it up. Then he take him down and move that ball across the field again. No, to create overlap. And Canadians are on the try line. So, Phil McKenzie at the end of that. As we see that once again, it was really very quick recycling from the uh, Canadians as they threw it out quickly, out wide. That's where the numbers were. And Phil McKenzie, wrong footing the defender and in for a great try for Canada. We're getting a quick ball from the rock, especially the first, first phase, second phase. You know? Japan is still organizing the defense line and the Canadians have moved the ball laterally. So we'll just wait to see if uh, Gordon McCrory can add the extra points. He's been accurate so yes. far, hasn't he? <laughs> Japan is taking the lead now by 10 points. So Canada leading this match, the debutants, ten points to nil, and the hot super sun. Canada are using their big forward you now, heating up first face. You now, Japan make a good tackle, the great turnover. Uh, this is going to be a chance for Japan to get uh, points on the board. And stepping up is uh, Ruji Noguchi. The Canada number eight didn't receive, uh, release the ball when he hit the ground. Seb Pearson. Yeah. And just talking to the uh, press this week, uh, the coach, the Japanese coach, uh, Ruji Nakatake, had mentioned that um, you know he's brought a young side here, and uh, really they're looking to. Um, 
to have a consistent performance uh, at this uh, World Rugby Pacific Challenge as well as handle the pressure and uh, build confidence, particularly for this young team. Looks good, and they're on the board. Japan a three, Canada a ten. Canada will be using their big forward, now hitting up the ball, so Japan have to uh, make sure they put the players on the ground and go for the ball. Canada have a very big forward pack. So this tournament uh, started way back in 2006, known as the uh, Pacific uh, Rugby Championships, but it has been... Um, it has been reformatted, and of course it's now known as the World Rugby Pacific Challenge. And what initially started out as two teams each from the Pacific, it now includes uh, Canada, Japan, as well as the Argentinians, and you know, I mean, that must be a great platform in terms of yeah. um, competition for these teams. Yes, a good pressure from Canada from the kickoff. No? They now they're playing down the uh, Japanese 22. Nice long throw into the lineup, but beats everyone. It's come back on the Japan on the Japanese side. Under pressure, knock on white. Knocked on from the uh, Canadians, so they're pretty pleased with that. The Japanese. As we look at that once again, it was a nice long throw, but it beat everyone. And uh, Rego was there to uh, take that one. So it's going to be a scrum feed here for Japan. It's a bit scrappy in the first 10 minutes. No? We cannot be lamp faces now, uh, creating uh, opportunity for, for both teams to try to move the ball forward to break the advantage line. It looked like a stop stop. I guess early nerves for both sides. Yone Mura. They decide to have a run at it, but great defense there from uh, Adam Kleberger. Driving them back, the Canadians. So pressure there from the Canadians, the Japanese lost the ball forward. So it's going to be a defensive scrum for them here. And dangerous times as well for yeah. the Japanese side. Japanese should uh, blow, keep hold on to the ball and look after the ball. Now it's in the terror uh, zone, so if Canada's going to turn over, the you're going to end up in Thailand. Coach. Gordon McCrory. And the front row for the um, Canadians, of course, uh, Bidens, the captain, uh, Bakwell and Dolzel, uh, are tipped to be the front row for the World Cup. They could easily make the starting, uh, be the starting front row at the World Cup, according to uh, media reports. So this is a very strong Canadian side that have come here to the World Rugby Pacific uh, Challenge. Good scrum by the Canadian. Patrick Poffrey had taken that one in. McCrory spreads it once again. They're very close now. The Canadians looking for their second try. McCrory. Kieran Hearn. And it's a second try for the Canadians. Another good try by the Canadians no? from, uh, from the set play, from the scrum. No? They won their ball. They make it three yards. Then they retain the ball again and they spin it wide. That really great overlap on the other side. McCrory has that for the dive as he passed it across to uh, Kieran Hearn. Very strong Hearn. Had enough strength to get over that try line. And they now extend their lead uh, to 15 points to three. As rain starts to um, pour down here in the capital city, Suva. Of course, uh, Fiji is under threat from uh, Cyclone Pam, and fingers crossed um, it won't affect the group. But um, that practically has been the weather conditions, hasn't it been? Um, 
It was shining earlier on this morning and then it, uh, the, the heavens you know, ran down and then it was uh, you know, nice weather. But again, just uh, seeing the change in, in, in the weather conditions here. So it's good to be around, you know, just take a bit of heat out of there the players can play well as well. One thing can affect the players is the, the heat, you know, it's very humid up there, but it's good you now we have some rain so we can take the heat away from the players. So 100% strike rate there from McCrory, adding the extra points, so it's 17-3 uh, in favour of Canada. Nice kick up high. Oh, he lost it backwards. Hirito Kato. But they've managed to regroup the uh, Japanese. Just the Canadian team uh, regained that ball again. No, from the kickoff. Hirofumi Higashikawa didn't release the ball that time, so they've been penalized. And we'll just wait to see. Oh, they're going to look for touch. Liam Underwood going for territory. The Canadians, they're already leading 17 points to three. The Japanese team seems to be uh, losing possession when they have the ball from first play. They need to keep the possession and try to use that ball wide. And mistake there from the Canadians, they kick too far. Crouch! Find... Set! Yonemura, they're under pressure, the Japanese. Good solid scrum by the Canadian. They managed to push the uh, Japanese uh, scrum back. So the Japanese uh, forwards buckling there under pressure. And the Canadians just showing their dominance earlier on in this uh, first half. And they get back position. Gordon McCrory will feed this scrum. So a lot of the players here in the Canada A side have um, represented the national team. Um, just uh, in the back row, we have uh, Callum Morrison and Evan Olmsted. They've had um, exposure at uh, the... Um, American Rugby Championships, but uh, for the rest of the team, it's a pretty experienced uh, side. The Canadian trying to uh, go on the soft side, but it didn't work. As we see that again, they decided to go on the short side. It was a good move, but he was bundled into touch. And great defensive effort there from uh, the Japanese to stop that momentum. Nice long throw. Oh, read well in there by the uh, Canadians. Callum Morrison. And they've got back position. The Canadians looking dangerous as the mom at the moment. They spread it out quickly again. John Moonlight. McCrory. Liam Underwood. Oh, nice gap has opened up for Callum Morrison. Spinning it very quickly, the Canadians. Phil McKenzie. Oh, they lost that one. Unfortunate that time for the Canadians. They were building up rather nicely. Kieran Hearn, the try scorer. Lays it back nicely, McCrory. Here they go again. McCrory. Great continuity from the Canadians. That's Moonlight running along like a wing. 
the Canadian team is look like they're shifting the ball around from yeah. left to right, yeah. no? Instead of using those forwards uh, hitting up straight, no? And John Moonlight has gone in for the Canadians' uh, third try. As we see that once again, it was patient build-up from the Canadians. And just an injection of pace from Kona Trainer. And then out wide uh, for John Moonlight. And that was an easy try for the uh, Canadians. There are not many Canadian uh, players are committed to the right, no? Just only one or two, the rest are standing out wide so they can just sit the ball across. So the debutants at this World Rugby Pacific Challenge, Canada A, after a flying start, 22 points to three. We'll just wait for the conversion attempt from Gordon McCrory, who, by the way, has had a 100% strike rate. Japanese team should be aggressive in the breakdown now, trying to contest and compete on those um, uh, right balls. No? Because these Canadian teams are only putting one or two players on the right. Looks good again, and he raises the flag. McCrory continues his fine form here and takes Canada A up ahead to 24 points to three. So Japan have a lot of work to do in, in yes. trying to get back to this match. It's a lot of work need to be done. If they can uh, slow down the rock area, you know, trying to, because uh, the Canadian team there is spreading the ball wide. Canadians attacking deep from within their territories. McCrory looks for touch. Finds it nicely. Very good clearance from the Canadian team. We haven't seen uh, Japan be playing in the Canadian 22 for. <laughs> it's been pretty difficult for them to get into the uh, Canadian territory, mm. but just showing how dominant this Canadian yeah. side is. And there he is, put his foot out into touch. That's uh, Seiya Ozaki. They are so dominant in uh, every facet of the game. 